Trump arrives in China to lavish welcoming ceremony amid tensions over trade in North Korea. President Donald Trump is making his first official visit to China amid regional tensions on trade in North Korea. Mr. Trump landed in Beijing on Wednesday following events in South Korea and is scheduled to meet multiple times with China's President, Eleven Jinping, during the two-day visit. Mr. Eleven was due to treat Mr. Trump to a lavish welcoming ceremony and tour of the Forbidden City, home to China's ancient imperial palaces. The visit comes hours after Mr. Trump addressed South Korea's National Assembly and pressured China to stop supporting North Korea. Mr. Trump made equalizing trade with China a centerpiece of his presidential campaign, but he has signaled that he may ease up in exchange for China's help with North Korea. However Mr. Trump arrived in Beijing on Wednesday amid mounting U.S. trade complaints, with limited prospects for progress on market access, technology policy and other sore points. The strains between the world's two biggest economies are fueling anxiety among global companies and advocates of free trade that they could retreat into protectionism, dragging down growth. Washington accuses Beijing of backsliding on market opening promises, and Mr. Trump said last week that the U.S. trade deficit with China minus $347 billion last year is so bad that it's embarrassing. I don't want to embarrass anybody four days before I land in China, but it's horrible said Mr. Trump. His government has raised import duties on Chinese aluminium foil, stainless steel and plywood, and is investigating whether Beijing improperly pressures foreign companies to hand over technology. If they discuss trade during the two-day visit, Mr. Eleven's government is unlikely to offer enough to appease U.S. negotiators, said John Davies of Mir Research. That is likely to lead to more protectionist measures on the part of the U.S., said Mr. Davies. While Mr. Trump is looking to boost sagging public approval ratings, the Chinese leader enters their meeting on a political high. The ruling Communist Party added Mr. Eleven's name to its constitution at a twice-a-decade Congress last month, giving him status equal to Mao Zedong, founder of the Communist government, and Deng Xiaoping, who launched economic reforms in 1979. At the Congress, Eleven promised to open the economy wider but affirmed plans to build up state-owned companies that dominate industries including finance, energy and telecoms. That, along with plans for government-led development of electric cars and other technology, makes foreign companies worry that Beijing is squeezing them out of promising field.